Hey. My name is Ken and it's been a while since my last video. If you watch my videos, you might remember me saying this. The plan for now is to actually make a bit shorter videos with a bit less content. But hopefully I am able to put out more frequent videos compared to this five months in between this and my last video. Yeah, about that. That didn't happen. In the last couple of months I've had some personal problems and that's basically why I've been missing in action. And I'm not gonna go into further detail to what it is, but I've basically just been working on myself to get back on track again. So that's basically a short little update on where I've been. And now we go back to talking about this neat little game. Well, progress in the last few months has been rather slow. Of course, it feels very annoying when you were having such a good pace on making progress just for it all to get to a sudden stop. But if you simply don't have the energy, which I don't have right now, or don't have any motivation, it can really be seen in your creativity and quality of work. And yeah, that's basically why I had to take things easy for the last couple of months and just take care of myself for a while. This way I hope to keep up with the quality of work that I previously showcased and I will just continue doing so. First of all, for the people who don't know yet, a little bit about this game that you're seeing here. Adventure of Tuck is a fast-paced roguelite game in which you defeat enemies, explore biomes and befriend cute little characters. Tuck also has several unique abilities which each can be upgraded. And some of these upgrades can even be combined into making that juicy powerful combo. Adventure of Tuck also has a Steam page, so if you enjoy what you're seeing here then feel free to wishlist the game. There's a link in the description to the Steam page, so head on over there and just click the wishlist button. It helps me and the game out a ton. So, a few months ago I was doing my thing and I was just thinking about my game. And I kind of felt like it really missed something. Yes, the gameplay is fun. The art is pretty good, if I may say so myself. But it lacks something more unique. And I know every game is basically unique in its own, with unique gameplay, unique art, a unique story and so on. But I wanted something more, and something that suits the game of course. So if you didn't know yet, the name of the book that Tuck is writing is called Adventure of Tuck, which basically means that the game is taking place inside of Tuck's book. Considering the fact that the game is taking place inside of a book, I got up my whiteboard and started brainstorming some ideas. First, I thought about time manipulation. Well, just going back in time. Let's say you would find yourself in a sticky situation where you are most likely going to die, and since the game is a story inside of a book, why not just rip out the last page and pretend it never happened? I already started thinking about all the work that would go into it, which is essentially saving the position of the player and every object, the stats and the objects itself. And then I thought, is this even fun? So I scrapped that idea and continued thinking about other ideas. So next up is actually an idea that I had more recently, but we're just gonna pretend that this is the second thing I thought of. I thought about making the art, the dialogue and other things level up the further you got into the story. But this would also level up all the stages, which means the forest would need 5 levels, the next biome, the desert would need 4 levels and so on. If you would start the game, the forest would be at level 1, so the art is not that amazing, dialogue is not that amazing and so on. And if you reach a desert, it would basically level up the forest to level 2, which means if you start a new playthrough, the forest would be leveled up. The reason why basically everything would level up is because Tuck keeps writing and keeps drawing and he's simply getting better at it. Now this, in my opinion, is a really cool idea, but it's simply way too ambitious. And next to that, you would start the game off at level 1, which is supposedly kinda crappy, which is not good, because you want the start of your game to be captivating, and it should be insanely polished, probably more polished than anything else. A lot of people decide in the first few minutes of playing whether they are going to continue even playing your game or not. So it's a super creative and cool idea, but it's simply too much. I need something way simpler. So my third idea, which is basically my second idea, but we are gonna pretend again that this is my third idea, is a drawing mechanic. Tuck has these ideas in his head for creatures, objects and anything basically that can help him in battle. 
In the middle of battle, the story stops and Tuck takes out his pencil. He has a few pre-made ideas ready in his head and you can select one of those. It gives you some information on what it does and you can draw it straight into the battlefield. These actions all have to happen fairly quickly because I don't want to ruin the pacing of the fights. I really enjoyed this idea a lot. It seems simple enough to make and it fits perfectly with the whole game is a story inside of the book thing. I decided to give this idea a go and started working on it. Well, the first thing I did was trying to figure out how to get more of a paper effect as a type of filter on my camera. I searched and searched and started getting kinda hopeless. Did I really have to bring out the whiteboard again and think of something else? And then suddenly, the Unity Asset Store gave me exactly what I was looking for. What? 45 euros? I am better off making a prototype first to see if I even want to do this. So, I thought of a few ideas of things that Tuck could draw. The first thing that came to mind was a wooden hammer. The wooden hammer is fairly simple and it just smacks the ground and damages all units around it. It didn't disrupt the combat much and I thought it was super fun to use. Also, before you're going to comment about this, the wooden hammer is still a draft and it will be updated into something better. Eventually, I did go back to that 45 euros unity asset and did a lot of thinking and grumbling to myself because if you didn't know yet, I'm Dutch and us Dutch people are known for being stingy when it gets to money. So clicking that buy button made me die a little bit inside. But oh boy, was it worth it. I mean, look at this paper texture I made. It's exactly what I wanted. I also know that I'm going to be using this more in the future for other projects. So it ended up being a great purchase. The next thing on the list was that I wanted a way to showcase Tuck's ideas for drawing and a way to explain what each drawing does. I decided the best way to do this was if Tuck held a couple notes with the drawings on them. And next to that, in the other hand, Tuck also holds a piece of paper with the description of whichever drawing you have selected. This meant I had to draw some hands, so I decided to be a little bit of a hand model and then draw out the hands in A-Sprite. Yes, yes, before you mention it, I know the hands don't suit the art style with anything else right now, but hear me out. These hands are in the real world, while the game is inside of the book. It's supposed to be slightly different from each other, a little bit more realistic, and I think it works great. After all of this, I also had to draw a new book, so it actually looks like the game is inside of a book. Then I threw some black magic on there, and there we go. Right, before we continue, you might see this little glass bottle down here. We obviously don't want to be able to spam drawings non-stop. Well, maybe we do, but that would be kind of unfair. So this glass bottle is actually an ink bottle. We have to fill up the ink bottle before we can start drawing. For now, you fill up the ink bottle for every tick of damage you deal to an enemy. And I know this is not a good way to do it, so I am open to suggestions on how we could tackle this issue. What are some good things you can think of in a way we can fill up the ink bottle? Please feel free to leave your suggestions in the comments. Once the bottle is filled up, you can see a button on there indicating which button to press. You press the button and let the drawing begin. You select the drawing here and place it right into the battlefield. Tuck will draw out the drawing and the game will resume with the drawing in place. I think all of this happens fairly quickly and doesn't completely ruin the pacing of the combat. After this, I slapped a little tutorial on there, which always pops up the first time you open it. If you need to see the tutorial again, then there's a little question mark button right here to reopen it. Of course, now we only have one drawing and that's kind of boring. So I made this little group of jellyfish which simply chase down enemies and shock them. The jellyfish stay up for 30 seconds while they are in combat and after that they disappear. It's quite enjoyable to me to just see them going around and doing the dirty work for you. Lastly, I wanted to add one more drawing for now and I already knew what it was going to be a long time ago basically. I added this cute adorable little warrior hamster named Mr. Nibbles. Nibbles is actually named after my own hamster who unfortunately passed away already about two and a half years ago. Ever since that happened, I always wanted to put him into the game as a type of tribute to him. Back then, I didn't know he was going to assist me in battle, but here we are. At first, I wanted him to be a little knight, with a helmet, a sword and a shield. But then I threw this little acorn hat on him and it looks so goddamn adorable. I gave him a little wooden sword and a wooden shield and he was ready to go into battle. Well, not before I make all of the animations and the code, which took way longer than expected. Nibbles has two different attacks, 
a charge attack and a regular short range attack and I quickly realized that they kept running into walls. So I ended up writing a very scuffed pathfinding algorithm which surprisingly works just fine. Yeah, let's not talk about that. I also wanted Nibbles to be able to stun small enemies with his shield. Uh, I did a little bit more of black magic and now small enemies can be stunned. And with small enemies I mean these guys, not these ones. When they are stunned, they either get unstunned after however long the stun duration is, or if they get hit by a guaranteed critical strike. Finally I made it so that you can actually summon Nibbles by drawing him into the battlefield. Oh, another thing is that enemies don't actually attack him, so if he attacks enemies, then expect those enemies to come after you. Just look at him go! It's such a blast to watch him beat up these puny, defenseless enemies. After all of this, I thought it was a good idea to make a devlog. Hey. If you have any more suggestions on what Tuck could possibly draw to help him in battle, please let me know in the comments. Keep in mind that these drawings are ideas that come from a kid which Tuck is. I know this video has been quite different compared to my other ones, so if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends and family about it and anything else. This way I know that you like what you're seeing here and that I should continue with this style of video. If you watched the video all the way until here, I appreciate you a lot. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a great day and hopefully see you in the next video.